February 21st, 1981 was a day of great celebration on Evansville's west side. The Wrights High School ladies basketball team delivered what would be the last single class basketball title to the city. In the winter of 1981, the school that was most known for its football tradition was on top of Indiana's women's basketball world. The ladies basketball tournament was relatively new in 1981. The Indiana High School Athletic Association first sanctioned women's teams in 1975 and Wrights won the first ladies Evansville basketball sectional in February of 1976. Just five years later, the Lady Panthers would see their way through regionals to win state. This unranked, unknown Panther basketball team would ride back in fire trucks to be congratulated and welcomed back by the whole Evansville's west side. Women's sports was still fairly new at that time, so I don't know what the expectations were. I think, uh, you know, everything was kind of new and surprising, uh, but it was apparent pretty early on that, that they had something. Uh, in that season, 80-81. Shelly Brand, Barb Dykstra, Danique Black, Brenda Sue Butler, Missy Morrow, and Coach Louise Owen would lead this unrigged high school basketball team throughout the season with Kathy Oxley, Patricia Suggs, Tony Irvin, Lisa Martin, Val Guest, Tammy Manchette, and Beth Drone helping off the bench to keep their leads. Coming into the season, the Lady Panthers would start three seniors and two juniors. They would not enjoy much of a height advantage, with their tallest starter being only five foot eight. The team also enjoyed a strong bench that could fill in for any starters who got into foul trouble. Our girls were quick, they were good shooters, and they liked each other, and, and uh, they complimented each other. The undersized Panthers constantly practiced their aggressive offense as well as their forceful defense. These small girls would soon make believers out of many who underestimated them. Practices were hard. I mean, it was nothing for us to, if we won a game, for us to run suicides after the game, that we beat the people like 50 points. We were up there running suicides because we played so awful. And um, give you an example, New Year's Day, we were up here practicing at 7 or 8 o'clock in the morning because um, they wanted to make sure we didn't party the night before. So it was either 7 or 8 o'clock, and then the first thing we did was run suicides. And they have to be under 30 seconds in the big gym, and all of us had to be under 30 seconds. And if anybody was puking, then we have to run them again. The Panthers opened with an easy victory over Tell City, 46 to 27. Their next opponent was Modern Day, their West Side rival. The Wildcats were no match for Wright's starting five. Brand, Butler, Dykstra, Morrow, and Black led every minute of the game. As the players went into the locker room at halftime, they led 45 to 19. When the Lady Panthers returned to the court after halftime, they would hold their lead for an 83-35 victory. With Shelley Brand contributing 20 points and the team shooting 63% from the free throw line, this game began the start to a triumphant season. We were coming out of the locker room and one of the somebody's dad overheard somebody saying, well, they need to make reservations for that team at State. The Panthers were on a roll, and it seemed like no one could beat them. They rolled through Ligoti, Princeton, Boonville, Harrison, North Posey, Memorial, Bar Reeve, Castle, and Vincennes. Off to an 11-0 start, the Panthers' next match was the North Huskies. Excelling at full and half-court pressure, the Wrights girls pulled ahead 41-35 to at the end of the third quarter. North came back at the end of the fourth quarter to send the game into overtime. In the first overtime, Barb Dykstra and Missy Morrow matched North's four points to send the game into double overtime. In the first 20 seconds of the second overtime, North's Lisa Craig scored seven points. The Lady Panthers appeared to have lost their momentum and wound up losing the game 55-64. to The loss to North would be a turning point in the season. The first game of the Evansville sectional was against the Bossy Bulldogs. 
The Bulldogs were no match for the Lady Panthers, and the final score was a 76-43 rights win. After this victory, their next opponent was the modern-day Wildcats. The Panthers soundly defeated their west side rival by a score of 69-38. With a record of 19-1, Wrights headed into the sectional finals. The sectional championship was against the North Huskies, who were the favored team to win the title. This team would be their first major hurdle on the way to state. Starting off the game, Shelley Brand had a hot hand leading the Panthers through the first quarter with a 17-13 lead. The Huskies exploded in the second quarter, scoring 22 points and taking a 35-26 lead into halftime. Coming out in the second half, Wrights outscored the Huskies 15-9 in the third quarter and 20-16 in the fourth for a 61-60 win and a berth in Saturday's regional tournament. Brand contributed over half of her team's points, scoring 31 of Wrights' 61. After winning their big sectional game against the Huskies, they blew past Jasper by a score of 71 to 63. The last hurdle before their semi-state game was the regional championship against the Boonville Pioneers. Boonville jumped out to a 12 to 7 lead at the end of the first quarter. Wrights went at them in the second quarter with a 2-3 zone defense pushing them back and taking an 18 to 16 lead at halftime. Wrights would hold the lead for the rest of the game, taking the regional championship with a 44 to 42 point win. We shot a lot of free throws, you know what I mean, and it came down to some free throws, um, you know, and, and it was a back and forth kind of game. But I do know that that was one of the hump games that we needed that we needed to get over. Going into Sima State, Wrights was completely focused on making it to state. Beating Seymour 52-45, to the only team to stop them now was the New Albany Bulldogs. In the Sima State Finals, New Albany held the lead throughout the entire game until the fourth quarter. The Bulldogs hit foul trouble, sending the Panthers to the line for 12 free throws. The Panthers made 10 of them, allowing them to win the game 62-55. to Wrights made it to the Final Four tournament at Market Square Arena facing the favored Marion Giants. The Panthers knew that this undefeated team was the highest ranked and most respective opponent in the Final Four. In the first ball game, the team that must be considered the favorite here a year ago, back for a second try, the Giants of Marion. Coached by Sally Lisey, they went undefeated in 25 ball games, reaching the round of Final Four, and they are second rated in the state of Indiana. Their opponents from the South will be Evansville Wrights. Evansville, the only club of the Final Four unranked, they have a 24 and 1 record. And this should be an interesting ball game, Jan Connor. The Panthers came out with high pressure defense. With a full and half court press, they forced several early Giants turnovers. Wrights would start off to an 8 to 0 lead at the beginning of the first quarter. As Judy Burns, Marion's leading scorer, drove down the court, she was hit in the mouth by an elbow, knocking out one of her front teeth. The Panthers would take advantage of her loss and lead the whole game. Going into the locker room at halftime, the Panthers led 27 to 20. In the second half, it was more of the same. Wrights outscored the Lady Marion Giants 28 to 26 in the second half, making the final score 55 to 46. Shelley Brand led the Panthers with 21 points, eight rebounds, and three assists. For the second straight year, Marion had made it to Market Square Arena and was knocked out of the first game of the tournament. With the highest ranked team eliminated, the unknown, unranked, Wrights High Lady Panthers moved on to the state championship. Wrights would meet the fourth ranked Rushville Lions who defeated the Chesterson Trojans. Down to the final 32 minutes of play as we get set for the sixth annual IHSAA Girls Basketball Championship Finals here at Market Square Arena in Indianapolis. Both ball clubs competing for the state title at 25 and one. The fourth rated Rushville Lady Lions who this afternoon knocked off Chesterton 70 to 64 against the unranked Evansville Wrights Panthers. The title game was held in front of 10,236 people in Market Square Arena. The Lady Panthers would push the ball down the court, hitting Shelley Brand for some easy jump shots. The Panthers would put pressure on the Lions early in the first half, forcing turnovers that led to easy shots. 
This allowed the Panthers to start off with a lead of 18 to 7 in the first quarter. Shelly Brand was leading the team with 14 points at halftime, increasing their lead 33 to 20. Coming out from the locker room, the Panthers would continue their upbeat aggression, allowing Shelly Brand many inside shots for her second highest score of the year with 31 points. With the rest of the girls doing their part, Wrights would be the 1981 last single-class girls IHSAA state champions with a score of 74 to 47. The F.J. Wright's Lady Panther basketball team would ride through Evansville as champions. Starting from the Whirlpool parking lot, the girls were chanting all the way to Wright's High School. Riding on the fire trucks, the Lady Panthers were yelling and waving at everyone they passed on the way to Wright's High School. After the season was over, Coach Louise Owen and Shelley Brand were chosen for the Indiana All-Star team. Shelley was on the first team, containing only 10 players throughout Indiana. As the years went on, the girls would continue to be known as the last team from Wrights to make it to the Sweet 16 and also the only girls basketball team in southern Indiana to win a single class state championship. Um, I think that the single tier um, or the single tournament um, brought Indiana basketball, had, had Indiana basketball at a certain level and I think that you know, the class system is, is good for exposing more people to that, that type of experience. Uh, but I think the, the single class system um, and winning under those conditions uh, make it a bit of a milestone. Going from an unranked and unknown team, the Lady Panthers came out on top with a 26-1 and record.